you know you're in a trendy neighborhood when you see a consignment store over there, you see a uh, old school movie theater over here, a beer garden right next door, a coffee place. We are right now in the neighborhood of Ballard here in Seattle, which is known as one of the more trendy neighborhoods that has been up and coming. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and today we're going to start with something in the box and also a nice cold brew coffee from Ballard Coffee Works right next door. So, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Nice to see you here. Welcome to the neighborhood of Ballard. It is a neighborhood that was formerly a predominantly Nordic uh, neighborhood with a, a lot of this people coming, specifically from Scandinavia, Sweden and Norway, coming during the late 1800s to early 1900s due to the issues that were happening in that part of the world. Lots of famine happening in many parts and many tens of thousands, if not more hundreds of thousands, came over here to these parts of Seattle because it kind of reminded them of Scandinavia. So we're going to see if we actually feel like we're in Scandinavia as we're walking through Ballard and apparently there's a good host of food, coffee options, snack options, pastries, things like that. So hopefully we'll find some cool things here. And also there is a interesting landmark that is very reminiscent of the film Up. So maybe we'll bump into that as well. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and let me What do you think is in the box? It's a nice little pink box. I talked about pink boxes before, but eh, this pink box is not what most pink boxes are used for. And I got myself a cold brew. And around, we're starting sitting down uh, to have a bite first. So inside the box, you already tell. Adrian says inside the box is a bike. No, it's a cupcake. We're a cupcake royale. And here is a classic red velvet cupcake with cream cheese. I'm excited to try this out. Look how beautiful this is. It's perfectly shaped cupcake. Hey Kay, nice to see you here. Angie, welcome. And I think the Prism Live Studio uh, app, which I use, has done something cool. And um, front facing mode, it apparently fades out now. It's no longer just a, a second of black screen. Let me know if, it's, if it looks like that on your end. That's kind of cool. All right, let's try this out. Adam says, how, uh, how are you today? It's hot in New Jersey right now. I'm jealous. Here it's freezing cold. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how Seattle lights don't dress as warm uh, because I, I look like I'm dressed for winter because it does feel like winter. It's like, uh, it's like 38 degrees Fahrenheit today, 42 degrees Fahrenheit today. Nell says you're so cute. Oh, thank you so much, Nell. Appreciate that. Let's try this out. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's good. Classic, classic cupcake. Great cupcake. Not super moist, nor too dry. It's kind of right there in the middle. So it's kind of more of your classic cupcake consistency. The cream cheese frosting, good touch. Very fresh. Mm, tastes really good. This place right over here, Ballard, Ballard Coffee Works. No, it can't be. Does Seattle actually have good coffee? <laughs> of course it does. The coffee here is really good. This is a really good cold brew. Mmm, wow. 
It's hard to describe. It's, it has. It's very bright, very bright, kind of lemony, citrusy. Of course, this is a plain cold brew. I'm talking about the notes. Kind of lemony, almost like a. Cantaloupe note I'm getting here. And it's really good. Wow. That's awesome. Alexander says, yeah, Nordic people drink the most coffee in the world. Uh, they do, indeed, yes. Uh, and I think maybe that's why the tradition has affected Seattle. Because I think Seattle, if anyone can do a double check, um, I think statistically speaking, it's one of the top caffeinated cities in, within the U.S. Um, and it might be that Nordic tradition. Awesome, but I'm going to save space for other treats as we walk around. This is a really good cupcake. Highly recommend Cupcake Royale here. And yes, it is pronounced Royale, just like uh, the Pulp Fiction scene where they're talking about cheeseburgers in uh, Amsterdam. And they say it's a Royale with cheese. They even have like a Royale uh, cupcake in there. All right, one more bite. Oh wow, that's a really well done cupcake, oh my god. Rainier, nice to see you here Rainier. Today, we probably won't see Rainier, the mountain. Uh, hopefully it'll come out before I leave Seattle. In the beginning of this trip. Well, awesome cupcake, enjoy. I'm sure it's a delight, says Oleg. It is indeed a uh, delight. Oleg, hope you're doing well. Thoughts and prayers to all the Ukrainians out there. I don't keep up with the news, so I don't know exactly what's happening. But uh, I hope you're safe. I hope your family continues to be safe. And um, all the old legs that tune in, all the other Ukrainians. Hope you're safe. Hope these uh, show help you in some small way. Let's continue walking through Ballard. So here we have the bus that passes through Ballard. Bus systems here are very convenient. We have an old school movie theater here, which I'm like really tempted to go. <laughs> I just want, want to go to the, these one of very one of these old neighborhood theaters. Um, you have to go more into Long Island or New Jersey to find these neighborhood theaters. And this is a multiplex, so this must be from the 60s or so. Here's a beer company. Let me know if anyone has any good beer recommendations here. And this was the cupcake shop we went to, Cupcake Royale. And right next door we went to, for this cold brew, was Ballard Coffee Works, which I do recommend. Really great coffee place. George says, are you going to an endless walk? Took a, inadvertently a few days ago, referred to that video, of the sculpture park that led to Ballard like a 30 more minute walk from where I ended um, so yes <laughs> today we, we will not be indulging in a super extremely long walk in the middle of nowhere so yeah old theater converted into a multiplex thank you Janice okay so it is a very old theater uh, that was converted to a multiplex probably in the 1970s or 80s So Ballard has gone through what is called gentrification. The G word is a very sensitive word. Uh, but in essence, it meant that it was an old neighborhood. Uh, residents, families have since the late 90s, early 2000s. This has become a very young neighborhood filled with a lot of young urban professionals. Yuppies is the name, coming here in droves, moving into a rapidly developing Ballard. Now, of course, we're on the main thoroughfare, so we're seeing some older buildings here. But soon we're going to see the newer apartment buildings walking around. 
Lydia says, walk around Ballard Avenue Northwest. Right here. Okay, thank you so much. This is a cool little bookstore. Secret Garden Books. Ooh. A secret garden. Ah, here we have the map of Seattle. Where Seattle. Puget Sound right over here. Lake Washington right over here. We've only seen really Lake Washington once in our trip when we saw Bruce Lee's grave. Uh, once you go a little bit further up, you start seeing Uptown Seattle where the Space Needle's at. We've explored a lot of that area. Right around here should be uh, where we got lost. And then here should be Ballard, right in this area. So right here, right across the, what is that, channel, uh, canal? Let me know what, what that is called. And look at this little of the bookshops of Seattle. That's adorable. And lots of books here of, 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 uh, of the neighborhood, that's cool. Short stories of Ballard, ooh. This would be very useful if I were doing more videos here. Ballard Locks. Oh, they have postcards. Oh, I may come back. What were the postcards? That's beautiful. The Soul of the City. Pike Place Market. Oh, that's awesome. So often a lot of people ask me, how do I do my research? Um, especially when it comes to like cities that are not like super well known or smaller stories in major cities i go to local bookstores like th these ones and you, those books i showed i buy some of them especially the ones that are more centered around secrets history or haunted stories uh and those are excellent resources uh, here in seattle i've really only used one called secrets of seattle um but in other places i've bought like tons Oh, here we have a clothing store. That was cool. Market shoes. Captain Time says shout out. Nice to see you here, Captain Time. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. So Buffalo Exchange is one of the more popular thrift stores in New York City, and there's one here. That's awesome. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of thrift stores here in Ballard. Lydia says Ballard is my old hood. Oh, I'm so glad. That's awesome to hear. Okay, it's freezing, ladies and gentlemen. i got to put on my gloves before we go on beautiful Ballard Avenue. says are we going shopping no we won't be doing shopping today um it's a bit uh it's a bit awkward sometimes walking around with the camera um into stores some people like it uh in bainbridge <laughs> there was a uh, uh, the person who ran the gift shop at the end of finding the video really loved that i, I jumped in and sometimes people don't like it so much it, it's a hit or miss so I, that's why I don't walk into stores too often, unless if I gauge how it is. And <laughs> I think I need to put a hat. <laughs> the the the, uh, the sun has has gone away here in Seattle, and now I have to. No wonder vampires live here in uh, Washington, like in the book series Twilight. Hey Maureen, nice to see you here. It looks chilly. Yo, it is chilly. Uh, it's a nice day. Nice. I love some Seattle weather today, says Susie. 
how hot is it in New York? Let me know. You know, I was very close in choosing a a tropical city. I was very close. I will be featuring a tropical city because uh, people were so kind enough to become patrons, and that was one of the goals. So if you still want to see a tropical city, we still have 15 uh, YouTube members away to get there. Um, but I was about to choose a tropical city. <laughs> but no, I came here to a very, very cold Seattle. And uh, yeah, the next location, I'm not too optimistic about, about heat in this uh, next city. Let's continue walking around. There was a great Puerto Rican restaurant at the end of the block called La Isla, but it might be gone. It says, Paul, yeah, a few people have recommended me La Isla, but I, I tried searching it and it is it seems to be closed. Uh, but there is a, a little stall that has uh, Puerto Rican style um, pastries. So maybe we'll look into that. It's 70 degrees in New York. It's 80 degrees in New York. Oh my God, I'm jealous. Hey, Gina says, I grew up there. My name is in the Ballard uh, Bell Tower. Ooh, cool. So, aside from the general history of this uh, neighborhood, I don't know too much more. So if anyone has recommendations, do let us know. But these are cool paintings wow look at this bob ross says i guess i'm a little weird bob ross with an owl a llama i'm not sure what that the other animal is and a dog on his fro hmm. interesting this one's beautiful wow Janice says, my mom went to Ballard. Oh, cool. Ooh, look at this. A curiosity shop. That's amazing. Lori says there are some very good Scandinavian bakeries here. Ooh, do let me know if I end up passing through one of them. I'll keep my eye open. This looks like a really old school American bar. That's cool. Here we have Skull Beer Hall. Oh my god. Hot cakes? Molten chocolate? What? Captain Time says Puerto Rican restaurant is closed, but I got to eat there a couple years ago. The food was fantastic. Oh, I'm so sad that it closed down. I think it's closed. Yeah, it's closed. It opens up at 4 p.m. But here they have hot cakes. Takes 10 to 15 minutes to bake. 10 to 15 minutes to bake. And yeah. What, they even have grilled cheese. Interesting. Hot cakes is incredible, says uh, Scott. The chocolatiest of chocolate cakes. Ooh. Yeah, it opens at 4 p.m. Pretty late. I'm surprised because most places close at 5 p.m. here in Seattle. Uh, but that, this one opens at around that time. If you need to do your shopping for wedding dresses, here they are. What is this? Kavu. Uh, clothing store for kids. Well, not for kids. Adults as well.
Marcy says most of the restaurants here will be open until 9 p.m. I don't know, Marcy. I gotta see it to believe it. I'm skeptical. I've been I've been hurt too much. I've been hurt too much, but going to a restaurant or a cafe that I was excited to go to, bright-eyed, optimistic, maybe you can't even say naive, and I walk up there, 6 p.m. here in Seattle, after getting a nice Seattle Sun 10, and it's closed. It's happened too much. It's happened too much. My childhood joy and wonder has been crushed by things close too early here in Seattle. So, to all the Seattleites saying that things are indeed open afterwards, I don't know. I gotta see it to believe it. <laughs> uh, let me know if this place is good. Great State Burger. They have a, a breakfast roll. That's cool. Anonymous News says, they're there. <laughs> Thank you for the comfort, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Claudia says, why do they close so early? It's a combination of, um, of the pandemic. Measures here were stronger than they were in the U.S. I mean, sorry, in uh, New York City. Or other parts of the U.S., like uh, Florida. Florida, there was no uh, restrictions. And then uh, the other thing is... Um, the more the touristy areas uh, downtown, there really isn't that much residential life. And a lot of people are working from home, so a lot of things have been closed also. So it's a combination of various factors. Let's check out this bell tower. Someone just mentioned, let me know who mentioned earlier that you have your name in the bell tower. Scott says, come to Miami. We still have it locked down. <laughs> Catherine says, but you, you did have good coffee. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I did have good coffee. I mean, ultimately, I'm having a good experience. There is really good coffee here. I'm very tempted to check out this one, Umbria. Let me know if Umbria is worth it. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. Just you know, being pretty much ending the day pretty early here in Seattle. Oh, there is a bell. Susie says, let's ring the bell. Let's see. It says the Ballard City Hall bell. The bell, a symbol of the heritage of Ballard's community, hung above the Ballard City Hall when Ballard was an independent city and a booming industrial center. On May 30th, 1907, the bell was rung to sadly announce Ballard's annexation <laughs> to the city of Seattle. To sadly. <laughs> they were like, ah, oh, damn it. Seattle got us. And it was later removed from the area. The former, the former Ballard City Hall was demolished in 1965. Oh, no. Oh, that's so sad. I hate, like, the U.S. demolishes too many buildings, which is always a bit sad. The thousand pound brass bell has been refurbished and returned to the Ballard community after an absence of nearly 40 years. On April 11th, 1976, Sweden's King Carl Gustav the 16th and Seattle's Mayor Wes Oltman, Oltman rang the bell to formally announce the creation of the Ballard Avenue Historic District and the resurgence of the community's interest in its historic past. The bell now hangs as a monument here at the corner of 22nd Avenue, Northwest Ballard Avenue. Wow. Wow, the king of Sweden came over here. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Scandinavian tradition is strong, and old man sounds like a Scandinavian name as well. Inkspire Life says, thought Seattle was more of a hustle and bustle city. 
Me Too inspired life. Uh, as I mentioned many times, the population is 4.2 million people in the metropolitan area. It's big for U.S. standards, but it's quiet. Um, and here's the list of the people. So we have a viewer who actually has their list here. Was it Janice? Janice is somewhere around here. It's not in alphabetical order, so it'll be hard to find. And the Ballard Bell was cast in bronze in 1892 at the Buckeye Foundry in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if the bell still rings. It was not Janice. Okay. Sorry about that. Scott says, keep walking towards uh, Shil Sol Bay Marina, and there's a fantastic tiny coffee shop there. Okay, thank you so much. Sally says, I woke up to snowing again in eastern Washington, <laughs> and, and it's because I shaved my dog last week. I know it. <laughs> Is that a superstition here in, in this part of the U.S.? If you shave your dog, it snows. I'm on the list on the wall behind you. Oh, thank you so much, Gina. This is Gina. So Gina, Gina, somewhere around here. It's going to be hard to find you, but you're somewhere around here, Gina. I like this little area. It's very nice. Uh, um, small avenue. Hey, Zito. You can't really go wrong with most coffee shops in Seattle. Just avoid the bikini barista ones. I, you know, I have not seen a bikini barista one yet. Sweet Mickey's Old Fashioned Candy Shop. Oh, that sounds nice. I like this building over here. This is a very nice building. Zito says in here it hailed. Yep. It hailed uh, the pieces of ice were the size of marbles. They were pretty big. Um, and then kind of stopped, so no, no snow, unfortunately. Susie says, I'm not, we, not going to even bother asking you to go to the candy shop. <laughs> Are you missing the busyness of Times Square? Well, not necessarily Times Square. Um, though I do miss the busyness of many UK cities. I do like more the vibrancy of, uh, if, I, if I were to live in a place, I'd prefer the vibrancy of, of more European cities. Gina says, yeah, it's a w long walk down to the beach, but it's worth it. Hmm, a lot of vintage stores here, this is nice. Who needs some flare pants? Let me know if you're looking for some flares. Sweet Mickey's candy shop. Hmm. I'm doing a live video showing the neighborhood. Can I walk in and show the shop? Oh, awesome, thank you. It's cool that you have all these uh, candies. Yes, we do uh, homemade yeah. fudge. 
Can we fudge? Okay. Can we fudge in the back? Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. We put eggs in the back room and we do roasted nuts as well. <laughs> Otherwise, we have bulk candy. Oh, nice. It's all one price. All near. Anything typical Seattle or, or, oh, or Scandinavian? Yeah, well, uh, we from... have a lot of nostalgia yeah. candies at the bottom okay. that we bring in on that. But mostly it's bulk candy bags, self serving. Yeah. You so. mix and match. Okay. Very what you cool. Want. It's all one price. So you Oh, oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's very, that's very uh, cool. So we have a lot of nostalgia yeah. things for us little kids. Oh my God. Charleston, we've got Smarties down here. Smarties, yeah, I remember these uh, big oh, league. Big, big, big league gum. <laughs> Bubble gum for a while. Sugar daddies, yeah. Smarties. 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 I don't think I've ever tried the Smarties. UK. Yeah. UK, oh, I see, okay. And anything that Seattle's known for. I'm not from Seattle. I'm from no, uh, New York. Really? Yeah. Not, mu not so much, right? Not so much. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm oh, I think I'm going to try one of your fudges yeah. then. Yeah. So we got the uh, casing here, which has all your truffles. Oh, you have homemade yeah. peanut butter cups. Oh, wow. I'll try one peanut butter cup, okay. please. Dark chocolate or milk? Uh, the milk, please. Okay. And... We got turtles, sea stacks. What is this, the bird's nest? Bird's nest is uh, like the haystacks down here. Yeah. It's marked with solid chocolate with coconut, shredded coconut in it. Okay, I'll try the one. The bird's nest has the little eggs on it, so it's Easter special. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll try one of those. I'll try one of those. Oh, you have the black licorice. <laughs> that's that's dangerous. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's all for me. I'm not a huge fan of candy, admittedly, but I have a lot of viewers that are like crazy about candy. Yeah. I usually go for the peanut butter cups. That's the thing I love the most. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you. You start the do you start the store yourself? Uh, no, yeah. Randy you is the owner? the owner of the company. Okay. Randy and Amy, and that's sweet Mickey is Randy's grandmother. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, she raised her specifically. Yeah. Quite a few years when they were little. Oh, yeah. I see. And he just named her after yeah. she passed, and she did candies at home right. in the community. She made candy so. Open up a candy shop, Sweet Mickey's. Oh, I love that. That's very cool. Let's have a Rusi as well, please. Oh, I can send you. Yeah. yeah. Gina, thank you so much for the stuff uh, for the uh, for the super chat. I appreciate you. So I ended up getting two candies. They had candies from all around. Uh, really cool. And uh, as he mentioned, some nostalgia candies, which means uh, basically candy bars you can't really find anymore. Um, but I'm glad that they had homemade peanut butter cups. So let's try that out. Uh, sweet, sweet Mickey's. Give them a check if you are from Seattle or visiting the area. Very nice guy. Thank you so much for. Let me go into the store. 
Uh, Kay says, I have no stock in candy right now, so I'll buy everything in the shop. Susie says, nice little candy. Yeah, and he, at the end, he said that uh, the store is named after the grandmother of the owner. So cool. Lydia says, I can't believe Ariel's in Ballard. <laughs> Indeed I am. There's a lot of cool stuff here. It's hard to choose. Oh, apothecary. Oh, look at that. Carol says, the one time I'm not in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Carol, you're, you're a local Seattleite. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know you've been tuning in for a while. Oh, gelato. Seattle gelato. <laughs> That's funny. Don't forget to eat your candy before the steak burger, <laughs> says George. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so this right here has a landmark designation. It was the Fremont Saloon. Ballard was, had a bad, bad reputation in the early 1900s because it got filled with saloons. So it was a den of vice. And it says Louis Anderson oh, began his... Uh, the famous Louis Anderson? Louis Anderson began his illustrated career in Ballard in 1891. No, not the Louis Anderson that unfortunately recently passed away. Uh, he quickly became involved in a thriving saloon business, fronting bonds for various bar owner liquor licenses. By 1902, he opened up his own saloon in the Fremont Saloon on Ballard Avenue. In 1906, he moved the Fremont Saloon to this building where it operated until Prohibition. He was a successful businessman. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson, I just had to, that's, that's a Matrix reference purchased and built several buildings in the area. He even dabbled in politics, serving as a councilman at large for the Ballard city government. Oh, interesting. 1905. And now it's a restaurant that sells cocktail. Oh no, it's a cocktail bar. Oh, with dumplings. Oh, cool cocktails too. That's awesome. Uh, Gene says, I've been here many times. It's fun. This, is, this seems like awesome, vibrant uh, neighborhood. Do a lot of these restaurants open up later? Let me know, uh, local Ballards. A lot of things here appear to be closed. And this piece of shop is open. Susie says, let's all choose a cocktail. Yes, 300 cocktails coming right up. More consignment stores, standard goods. This place has a, a fireplace. What is this? Ooh, brunch. Oh, egg sandwiches. Oh, this is a, a brunch bar. Oh. That kind of looks cool, this brunch bar. Let me know, is it worth it? Uh, uh, Sabine. K 
he says it's like a ghost town, yeah. yeah. As I mentioned, uh, Seattle is a very quiet city. So if you're European, you might be a little bit shocked <laughs> seeing a place like this. Um, but let me know, is Sabine worth it? Now the reason there's not that much people traffic is because, yes, we're right now walking through a main thoroughfare, which could fit in any place in Europe, but Seattle overall and then the metropolitan area is still very car centric. So very car centric. Even so much so that there's massive parking lots all around Seattle. Like right down there. Ron says egg salad wasn't that uh, the food from Mexico. That was egg salad sandwich. So pro tip, never eat egg salad sandwich before going on the airplane trip. Um, but egg sandwiches is different. It's cooked egg. Chris says, are you going to the Nordic Museum? I'm not entirely sure. It depends. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Lydia says the Nordic Museum is fantastic. Really? Here's another landmark building. And it says um, Percy Sankey Dry Goods. The pioneer businessman Percy Sankey built this building in 1893 to house his dry goods business, which had existed elsewhere on Ballard since 1891. For the next 20 years, Percy and his partner Alexander ran the Sankey and Grubb dry goods store in this location. In 1915, his wife Mabel joined them in the business, narrowing their inventory to men's furnishings. The Sankey family proposed here until the late 1920s. During the 1940s and 1950s, the building was home to the Silver Spot Tavern. Ooh. Some beautiful, I mean, the buildings are small, of course, but some like very nice preserved buildings. Seattle does a very good job of preserving their architecture. The ones they, they have preserved. And here's a very modern kind of 80s looking building. Oh, so interesting seeing these places with like fireplaces. Anana says, Ariel's quest for knowledge is endearing. <laughs> I'm glad you think so, Anonymous. Probably used to be a hardware store because it's called King's Hardware. And coldest beer in town. And it's an old school pub. Or not pub, but like American bar. Wow. It's kind of cool because coming here to Seattle, you could get that piece of Americana uh, in a big city, uh, which it's not so evident in the U.S. I mean, in New York City, yes. In New York City, you end up, there's a few bars that feel like very American bars. But here I've, I've noticed a few more and they feel more authentic. So that's kind of cool. If you don't know what Americana is, it's basically just American culture and a typical American bar. Um, those like kind of wide booths, uh, kind of bare bones, no frills type of bar. They're also known as dive bars. And Chris, thank you so much for the, Chris Clancy, thank you so much for the five euro super chat. Sorry you answered a million times. How do you travel full time? I travel full time because I run a multi million dollar drug empire. No, I'm joking around. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, I just uh, I, I make videos for a living. <laughs> uh, YouTube, I could put ads. I also have patrons and I uh, have sponsors. 
And also I do freelance videos that are very similar to the ones I already do on Urbanist for other companies, museums, and things like that. Thank you so much for the five pounds, five euro super chat. Oh, wow. New, new apartment buildings right over here. Gita says, oh my God, still there, Hattie's Hat? Apparently. Hattie's Hat is a historic diner. Really? Is it good? Hat good, let me know. Uh, Carol says, you should go to five point bar. Okay. <laughs> Hattie's Hat is the best, says Janice. Okay. I love how beautiful this is. Hey, Angel. You're making me hungry for chocolate, says Jeanette. I still gotta try that chocolate. <laughs> I got it in my bag. It's classic Seattle, says Carol. Oldest cafe and bar. Oh, cool. Cool shops. Oh with some hats. Nice architecture to inspire life. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very nice avenue. Susie says, you made me crave popcorn yesterday, so I made popcorn. Oh, I'm glad. Astro pump. Wow, this is a fancy looking barbershop. Look at this. Ballard Hardware, built by the Ballard Saloon entrepreneur Louis Anderson. Oh, our favorite host of Price is Right is back. This structure was originally home to the Warren Brothers drugstore in 1912. Samuel and Louis. Barthimili opened up the well-known Ballard Hardware and successfully conducted business. The neighborhood is so good at preserving a lot of these buildings. Beautiful clothes that they have here as well. Wow. Hey, Chris says, do a video on traveling cheap while freelancing. <laughs> Also, when revisiting Ireland, thank you so much for the five year super chat. Have you seen everything already? No, no way. Um, Chris, thank you so much for the extra five year super chat. No means that I visit all of Ireland. Uh, I hopped around quite a lot, but there was uh, some areas where I just wasn't unable to go that require more of a car. And then, um, and then uh, when it comes to traveling cheap, check out my re recent video called How I Feature Cities. Maybe I should rename it, uh, but it's a video I posted a few days ago, How I Featured Cities. Covers how I find good airfare and uh, good lodging. Jeanette says, I like the way you pronounce my name. Makes me feel French, but I'm really Scots-Irish. Scots Thank you for Arlington, Texas. How do I pronounce your name otherwise, Jeanette? <laughs> the Jeanette? Uh, I'm not sure. But I'm glad you enjoy my uh, alternative pronunciation. Morgan says, yeah, it's so beautiful. Yeah. It's a gorgeous uh, Main Street. Oh, we got a car coming here. It's a gorgeous Main Street. I love this building over here. Says the scale and the walkability here is amazing. Yeah, I mean, um, Seattle, despite having pretty big highways running through it, it's still a very walkable city. Hey, Lorraine, nice to see you here. So Lorraine from NYC.
Oh, I like this. The splintered wand. This seems like a cool bar. But is it, is it like Harry Potter themed? Oh, a seaplane. Ron says, I do miss the old Spanish pronunciation of my name. Ron, well, you got to go back to your original <laughs> username. Look at this. The Ballard Livery and Transfer, considered one of the largest moving companies in the area. And here's the old photo. Morgan, nice to see you here. Welcome. Lorraine, thank you so much for our 500 stars. It was established on Leary Avenue in 1907, excuse me. Um, during the early years, the Ballard of 20 movers and 10 horse-drawn carriages. Their warehouse was located on Shilshol Avenue. Don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, this building was a local newspaper. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, it is a um, it is a uh, fantasy theme. Spells, portions. That's what it says there. That's really cool. What is this? They don't even have like a menu outside or anything. Lydia says the neighborhoods are walkable, but often you have to drive. Yeah, especially between neighborhoods. Lori says, there's also a museum at the locks that you might be interested in seeing. Yeah, the Nordic Museum. Let me know, what does this place sell? Is it even open at this time? That's so cool, the splintered wand. There's like no menu outside. I'm not sure if it's like a speakeasy or if it's even open. Uh, let me know. And let me know how far am I away from the Nordic Museum. People really want to see the Nordic Museum. Do you think it's really worth it? I'm, I've, I've been very skeptical of museums. You know, once you see a few... Um, I've been traveling for many years. I've been traveling uh, a lot for seven, six years, seven years at this point. After you see a few museums, you start kind of getting bored of them. <laughs> to be honest, let me know if, if you felt the same. Carol says it might be open later. That's so cool. Huh. Oh, interesting. It is a bar. It is an absinthe bar. It's not open yet. I think it opens up later. Oh, that's so cool. They even have the absinthe. Um, so it's not, kind of looks like it would be for kids, but nope. This is, this is a bar. And they have the absinthe uh, glasses. I'm not sure what to call them, but uh, was used to. That's awesome. Chocolate, shall we? Who wants to try the chocolate? Let me know. There's an awesome coffee shop. Things. Some museums are worth the money if it's cheap, says Adam. Yeah, museums here are also very expensive. Seattle's probably been the most expensive. $25. Because I went to the uh, one, one of the premier art museums, Seattle Art Museum, was like twenty, 
three twenty-four dollars. The space needle was thirty-seven, something like that. Museums here have been expensive. All right, let's try the chocolate. First, let's try this chocolate nest, coconut nest thing that was for Easter from the chocolate shop with uh, some jelly beans. This is gonna be weird, I have a feeling, but I'm excited. Move up. They ran away. Hmm. Whoa. Hmm. That is really good. Lots of coconut. Yeah, I lost two jelly beans, but that's okay. You win some, you lose some. Really good chocolate. Really good chocolate. These are very, co very coconut heavy. It tastes like a macaroon, but just instead of the... It almost tastes like the Girl Scout cookie, the one with the coconut. Let me know the name of that cookie. Mimosa, Mimo Mimosa, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let me know the name of the Girl Scout cookie. It tastes really similar to that. This is really good. And here's a massive $5 <laughs> peanut butter cup. <laughs> Look how gigantic this is. Is it Samoa, Samosa, uh, Samosas? Or Samoas, Samoas. Samoas, thank you so much. Samoas is the name. So here in America, there's a association of Girl Scouts. Basically it's uh, young women, girls, who uh, do camping and stuff like that. And every uh, certain time of year, I think it's early spring, they sell cookies. I think it was just the time, just like two weeks ago, they were selling cookies and they sell like, uh, like four or five different types of cookies. One of them is with coconut, it's called Samoa's. Let's try this out. A gigantic peanut butter cup. Wow, that's a lot of peanut butter. This is really good. Look at all that gigantic peanut butter. Wow. That store, Mickey's, getting really good milk chocolate, very good chocolate that they're having. The peanut butter is nice. It is a whole lot. It's shocking at first because Usually I'm not used to this much peanut Whoa. Oh my god. This is a sugar bomb. No oh, well. But that is a bomb of peanut butter and sugar. I'm going to save the rest for later. Too much peanut butter for me, says uh, Lorraine. Yeah, it is, is heavy on the peanut butter. And definitely not meant to be balanced. Oh my God, okay. Whew. I think I'm gonna need a second coffee at that Nordic Museum that the masses are demanding. So before I continue, A. Where's the Nordic Museum? What direction do I have to walk? Pro tip for healthy teeth, uh, swish your mouth with water after eating candy or any type of food. So let me know where this Nordic Museum is. Lydia says go west. 
like on Ballard Avenue, when I get there, walk back to Market Street and turn left, says Janice. Okay. And then second, slam that like button right now on YouTube and share this video on Facebook with relevant Facebook groups. How much was the gigantic peanut butter cup? Asked Claudia, five US dollars. The other one was four US dollars or three US dollars. Go down West Market, okay. So go to West Market and turn left, okay. Cool. So market has to be a little bit further down, I assume. I gotta throw this away first. Orchestry with the buses I started there. Thank you, Janice. Hope they allow us to come in. Yeah, that's that's why I don't cover museums too often anymore. Mmm, mm. Hattie smells good. They have chicken, fried chicken sandwich. Marcy says, if they don't let you in the museum, go to the Hiram Chitin Locks. Ooh, cool. Okay. Thank you. The lava cakes are great, says Lydia. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Seems like great restaurants here. Jenna says, there seems to be more people now. Yeah. People are coming out. So that was the candy shop earlier. And we're going.
Okay, says the outdoor dining option seems to be bigger. Um, yeah, kind of shocked. A lot of other places in Seattle don't have that much outdoor dining, but here it does. She's more European to me. <laughs> Baby Channel says, hey, Ariel, I'm happy. Oh, I'm glad. It's awesome to hear. Jan says, you're almost at market. Yes. I'm passing so much good food. George says, is Ariel going in circles? Yes. We're, we're backtracking because um, many people want to see the Nordic Museum. So let me see if we can get into the Nordic Museum. No guarantees. Lydia says Yahoo! Morgan says, I woke up two hours ago from my nap, anxious, and then I realized I have nothing to do but love others and be thankful to them. That was a beautiful realization. Baby Channel asks, is this New York? No. We are on the opposite side of the United States of America. It looks like the museum is closed on Thursday, says Janice. Oh, no. Oh, Thursday is an odd day for it to be closed. Usually it's Monday or Tuesday. Apocalyptic quietness. I think this is the case in many American cities. Um, as I mentioned, America is really dependent on the car. Very addicted to the car. So a lot of people use their cars. So the highways are probably thriving with, with a lot of people passing through. But not so much walking on the street. Wow, Ainsley, Ainsley Gabriella says, long time viewer, finally subscribed. <laughs> Ainsley, it took you a while, but thank you so much. Um, finally subscribed, learned so much from watching your videos. Keep up the great work. Ainsley sending over 50 Canadians across the border. Luckily, it's a short, short drive away, only about three hours. Thank you so much for sending those 50 Canadians over the border here to Seattle. A round of hearts to Ainsley for sending a whopping 50 Canadians. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm not sure how you got them over border control, but I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So here are the new apartments that we're starting to see. Very, it looks very similar to the apartments that we see in Brooklyn.
Susan says, hope things are better for you and your mother. Who are you referring to, Susan? What kind of person is Seattle for, says DS. That's a good question. I mean, the biggest employer is tech. So a lot of people here are working in tech. What is Seattle for? That's a really tricky question. You know, um, what is Seattle for? <laughs> okay, I'm going to need some help with this uh, question because I really don't know. Um, it's not for the history buff. There's not that much deep history here. Of course, every city has history. Uh, if you look closely enough, but it's not that obvious. It's not that big. It's not that long history. So, not for the history book. Is it for the foodie? Mm, not so much. I don't think it's for the foodie. Is it for the coffee? The coffee's great. Uh, but, you know, once you try three or four great coffee shops, it's, it's not, it's not going to stick out to you. Um, so yeah, the coffee is good. So I would say it is partly for the coffee lover. Is it for... I think Seattle's more for the outdoor enthusiast. If you are someone who wants to stay in the big city, but be in close proximity, and Marcy was so kind enough to send me uh, this um, via a message saying why Seattle's more for outdoor enthusiasts. Nearby Seattle, it has a whole lot of outdoor activities. You can summit Mount Rainier. You can uh, go to the beautiful waterfalls. You can do lots of hiking trails, lots of biking trails. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the Seattle area that you can use this as a base and use a car to go for outdoor activities. I think, I think that's what the city is for, mostly. And a coffee lover, if you want to experience some good American coffee culture. Let me know. What, what do you think? Oh, Panajotas, I hope you're uh, feeling better. Hope your family's feeling better. Christine says, that's why I moved here, because of the outdoors. Oh, Christina, I didn't realize you were a local Seattleite. It's a beautiful area. You, yes, whole Northwest is outdoor culture. Joe says, Seattle's for urbanists walking around. Not for the urbanists, no. Like, like if you were someone who, who like deeply enjoys cities, it's not quite for the urbanists. It's not, the city's nowhere near dense enough with history and uh, walkability, I think, to say this is for a city lover. Toilet brush salesman says uh, Seattle's very LGBT friendly. That's good to hear. It might be also for the beer lover. That might be the other one. If you are a beer lover, a beer enthusiast, this might be the place. All right, let's see if this is open. Okay, bear with me. I got to ask if I can uh, film. Uh, hopefully they'll uh, allow me to do so. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, no guarantees. Is the museum open today? It is open awesome. Today, yes. And can I film the museum walking around with my phone? Uh, for I, what purpose? I do travel videos. I show people the beautiful neighborhoods and history of cities. Mm, okay, yeah. so those uh, do need to be approved. Ah, they do. Advanced, oh no.
do that or out on vacation. Um, I, I really I don't have the ability to permit that for you. Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. It's going to disappoint a lot of viewers. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry. That's okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. Possibly that gives that type of permission or a marketing person here? No, actually no? she's on vacation. Um, I would appreciate that. Sorry, sorry I came very spontaneously. I, that's, that's the type of videos I do. That's what they do. Okay, no worries. Okay, no worries. Maybe coordinate something with her and maybe come back. Okay, um, all right. No yeah. worries. Thank you all so right. much. Have a good day. Beautiful building, though. That's why, that's why I don't really enjoy, oh, one of the reasons I really don't cover too many museums nowadays is many of them are pretty, pretty much sticklers for a video. Um, Europe is a bit more lax, but here, here in the US, covering museums is a bit tougher. <laughs> Susie says, looks like they need <laughs> customers. Indeed. Well, you know what? I'll put this out. If anyone wants to call this individual uh, and see if they can get permission right now, then I'll put it up there because I think there's still a little bit more to see uh, for Ballard. So head left to the lock. So we'll go to the lock. Right here. And if you use this number, please, please be respectful. Please be respectful. Um, here in the U.S., they have to uh, use a chain of command. And um, unfortunately, unfortunately, people, um, it's not always the best paying jobs in these places. And, and they, they can get fired at any moment. So... Um, of course, most people behind the counter would always play it safe. Yeah, most people behind the counter will have to play it safe because um, because of um, because if 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 on the case that the person who The person who um, who runs the place uh, does not approve that the person behind the counter let me through uh, or let any type of person making video through. That person could lose their job. And something, unfortunately, it's it's the case here in the U.S. That's why in Europe it's a bit more lax. And um, in Europe, people don't lose their jobs so easily for something like this.
or you know a bunch of other different things but people don't lose their jobs so easily in the UK France Italy especially in cultural institutions like museums or um, or even stores or even restaurants and things like that but here here in the US you can get fired at any moment and and that's why it, it sucks that's why this, that's why people generally are very cautious in not letting someone come in and just uh, film spontaneously <laughs> Linda says, I totally understand they're just doing their job. Yeah, so feel free to call that person. Um, of course, be respectful. What's her name? Let's see. I forgot. Didn't catch her name. Rosemary Jones. Feel free to call Rosemary Jones. Be respectful. And if on the odd chance she uh, turns up, <laughs> then we'll walk in. But if, if uh, she turns up, by the end of this live stream. All right, let me uh, bundle up again. Gina says incoming indeed, yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, um, another reason why I don't cover museums more often is because, especially here in the US, I've reached out in these past five years doing urbanist videos. There's so many museums going to the cities I visited. New York, Boston, Washington, DC. Um, and now Seattle. I've reached out to many museums, not, not so much in Seattle, but I've reached out to museums in New York, uh, Boston, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and they never respond. They never really get back. Um, New York, only until very recently in the past few months, has started allowing uh, people who make videos to come into their museum. So uh, luckily, the American Museum of Natural History has, fi uh, I finally collaborated with them a few months ago. That was really nice. But that's why i kind of given up on these museums because I never get a response back. But I do get a response back in the UK, which is very nice. <laughs> All right, let's continue walking around. I, I know this dude says I'm really calling them. Yes, if you do call uh, Miss Jones, please be, or Mrs. Jones, please be respectful, okay? Let's continue walking around. And Joe says, I just called in. She said, run fast inside. Lion says it's free promotion. Huh. Carol says is this person on vacation. It appears to be their off day. I'm not sure vacation. Look like we're art thieves. I want. I do understand that for art museums. So our museums, it is a bit more understandable if uh, if they don't want someone filming. I, I do know, I do understand that. But yeah, it's something like this. Um, in a museum like this, is more of a cultural museum. There's not really that many artifacts that uh, someone would steal. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not really a target for heists uh, like an art museum would be. And the art museum does have the issue with copyright. Uh, but in cultural museums like this, no, it doesn't. So that's, that's why it's, sometimes it's a bit frustrating coming to a cultural museum and um, A, they don't respond via email and B, when I go inside, uh, they, they tell me no video. And it's sad because, you know, there's no copyright, there's really no threats of, I think, security issues, I think at least. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's a cultural institution. Anyway, let's walk around. So. Let me know where the locks are. Is it right here? Janet says, it is a national museum. Sometimes they have valuable traveling exhibits. Oh, okay. But they're very rarely ever the target of any crime like that. It happens more in art museums or 
Uh, here's the railroad. He needs to follow in this context. Susie, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're doing well. And Gary as well. Marcy says... Uh, Marcy says, uh, as a marketing person, they have to vet you first. Indeed. Indeed, Marcy. Yes, yes. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I've kind of just stopped reaching out to places because they, they usually don't reach back. So it's, 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 uh, I've kind of just given up on American museums for the most part uh, when it comes to doing live videos like this. Joe says, I'm going to call Elon Musk and turn this into a, a shopping mall. <laughs> well, Elon Musk did buy Twitter. Diaz asks, what's the best thing I've eaten in Seattle? The which is the hot dog with cream cheese. New York. Uh, they do a different type of cream cheese over here. Okay, so how far away is the locks? Hey, Morgan says. Yeah, Morgan, that, uh, thank you so much for trying to reach out. Veronica says, are you taking a next place I'm going? Ooh, stay tuned. Locks are about three blocks ahead to your left. Okay, Janice. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Not far. Okay, cool. Ron, I already dropped a hint on this live video of where I'm going. I'm no longer going to dish out any more information about the future location. What is this? Eric says, I'm glad this, the, the, the museum didn't send the SWAT team in to, for, uh, because of you. <laughs> Luckily, that has never happened in the U.S. I've never gotten someone very concerned about a museum camera. Uh, it has not happened. Only happens at malls. 
ever so often. This is like a squid, a metal squid. A full metal squid right over here. Okay, so which way do I have to go? Here through the NW locks, this way, or continue on Market Street? Let me know, see out of lights. This way, or this way? This way, or this way? Left, okay. <laughs> Gordon says, is he wearing a full metal jacket? Yep, that squid was wearing a full metal jacket. You can call him even a full metal alchemist. Stay left, says Lydia. Okay. Miss Love, nice to see you here. So sorry to uh, be late to the party, but I'm glad you saved me a seat, says Miss Love. Yes, Miss Love. From. Ooh, who wants to climb some rocks? Here we have a cafe called the Lock Spot. And I like their telephone booth. Look at that. That's cool. Pat says it's unfortunately terrible food. Oh no, that's so sad to hear. All right, which way? Let me know. Here towards the botanical this open? Let's we'll see. Joe says, what food is Seattle known for? You know, that's a good question. Seafood is uh, Seattle's most known for seafood. Um, it's most known for seafood. The Seattle dog is also very famous. says the Carl S. English Junior Botanical Gardens. It says the Hiram Chitin Locks is a vital part of Seattle. In addition to being one of the tourist attractions in the area, it is one of the busiest lock systems in the nation. Walkways are going to be often crowded. Oh no. What? Crowded? If you have time, walk across the spillway. Oh my god, it's gonna be crowded, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't think uh, crowded in Seattle. <laughs> Gate area, the museum is ahead. This garden is very pretty, says uh, 
Lori. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Lori. Walk all the way through the park, says Angie. Okay, much Angie. What is this little area over here? Dia says, uh, Seattle's said to have some of the best pho in, in the U.S. Have you tried any? So pho is a Vietnamese noodle dish. No, I have not tried pho yet. I am very tempted to do so. Yesterday I had an amazing noodle dish, but that was uh, Taiwanese style. Uh, yeah, very tempted to go to a pho place. Uh, so Seattle is also famous for chicken teriyaki, which I actually haven't had yet. But chicken teriyaki was invented here. It's a Japanese American dish. Sometimes you just got you, sometimes you just not sometimes you gotta just not give a fuck. Mark P says, you are so fucking, <laughs> fucking, great, oh yeah, the, the fucking, I would love to go to that restaurant, <laughs> king, king fa, just switch her around, Ronald says, mind blown Ariel, did not know about the teriyaki, Lori says, such an, another beautiful day. You've had great luck. Oh yeah, it's always sunny in Seattle. Now that's a tree. Gregor the Those trees. I love the flora of the Pacific Northwest. It's gorgeous. More crowded in the summer. Uh, Carol says it's more crowded in the summer. Really? I am. I'm still skeptical of this. Uh, Mytholo uh, mythological crowdedness that happens in Seattle. Apparently restaurants are open later. Apparently it's crowded in summertime. Apparently people go to the historical landmarks. I am very skeptical. Ron says, what's next? Hawaiian pizza was invented in Canada? <laughs> Indeed it was. Uh, I don't know. Adam says, what do you think of the garden? I'm loving it. It's a beautiful garden. I love, as I mentioned, I love the flora of the Pacific Northwest. That's why it's called the Evergreen State or the Emerald City. Also because of all the emerald colors.
Those uh, geese from Canada could be very mean. Yes, they can. Angie says it's so strange talking to people not from Seattle that they're so skeptical that people are still pandemicing here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Angie, uh, yeah, thank you so much for sending those articles. So Angie and a few other Seattleites have sent the articles about how really serious people have taken the pandemic here. Um, it, it, is, it is a bit shocking uh, because, you know, most of the U.S., not so much. Um, of course, New York shut down for many months, but by, by early 2021, 2021, by early 2021, things were already getting back to normal. By summer 2021, uh, New York was in full business. Um, Boston as well, Washington, D.C. as well. So uh, this feels emptier than Boston did when I went in, what was it, October 2020? <laughs> like I went to Boston in the middle of the pandemic in Washington, D.C. This feels emptier than those two cities. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm, uh, I'm shocked uh to see the city so empty so here we have the locks oh, we have a tour group ah uh hosted by one of the park rangers that's cool MK says Florida Florida has been fully operational the entire time. Yeah, indeed it has, yeah. Carol says, personally I like the absence of the surroundings. Indeed you can, yeah. I think it's a fine quiet that's why I like New York in January um, and I think like Boston in late fall also is pretty quiet um, but I think it's a fine line between quiet and kind of feeling eerily quiet sometimes uh, I think um, the best cities have that right balance where you don't feel crowded Something's happening. Oh. Salmon uh, jump over here. And we'll catch one for dinner. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Live salmon dinner. I'm going to capture one of those salmon by a loaf of bread and just make a sandwich.
Wow. Oh. Ooh, it smells really fishy. Wow. That's a strong smell. Mm. Has a uh, smell of um, not dead fish, alive fish. Oh wow, <laughs> the water level went down now. Right here. And guess they're going Lori says this allows for passage of boats from Lake Washington, Lake Union, all the way to the Puget Sound. Oh, cool. Hyde says it smells like Teen Spirit. Now I know why Kurt Cobain made that song. Yep. If we didn't have the locks, the water of the level of the lakes would drastically lower. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. That's awesome. So that way, I guess. Morgan, nice to see you here. Just vibe says, Hey, Ariel. And Kay says, Okay, there's a bridge that lifts. <laughs> there is. Alex says you're on the Magnolia side. Oh, I don't want to go back to the Magnolia side. So let's uh, backtrack. Yeah. Building the locks was a major engineering. Oh, cool. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Um, let me know why they were built in the first place.
the lakes and Chittenden locks. This allows vessels to move back and forth on one water elevation to another. Notice how the water level of the Puget Sound is lower than the one of the Salmon Bay. Fresh water of Salmon Bay meets the salt water of the Puget Sound at the locks. Depending on the tides, there can be a 6 to 26 foot difference between fresh and salt water. Interesting. So here we see Salmon Bay and the Puget Sound. Wow. Amazing. Beautiful clouds. And now the boat is moving towards the lower water elevation. So we see it right down there. You've had an amazing time here in Seattle with the weather. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed, I have. Lots of energy in the water, says Hyde. Really? Oh, cool. Hyde is our resident shaman who tunes in in the comments. Try and see if the building's all open, says uh, Lori. Oh, see, this is the office appears to be. No public access. Yeah, this, this appears to be closed. Oh, nice. Cherry blossoms. Exactly what I wanted to see. The salmon ladder is the main part. What's the salmon ladder? Is it is just a ladder, right? <laughs> After walking all the way to Magnolia the other day, I don't really feel like going back to Magnolia. So let's stick on this side. Judy says, if you want cherry blossoms, go to the University of Washington. Oh, cool. Okay, so people are saying that it does not require walking into the neighborhood of Magnolia. 
that's right here to see the ladder. Okay, so we'll make that our last stop. Let's check out the salmon ladder here. Oh, we got the railroad passing. Yesterday, uh, we had a fellow train enthusiast, Bob, who tunes in from the UK, counted all the railroad cars that we saw the other day. It was upwards of 111 cars. Janice, como está acá? Como está acá to all the Filipinos tuning in? Magandang Apo. Gordon says they're, they're supposed to have an underground to see the fish. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> Step at least one foot into Magnolia, but no more than that. Is this it? Are these the salmon ladders? Let me know. Should we go downstairs? There's a few, there's a ladder here. Uh -huh. Let me know. What, what will we find down if we take the ladder? My shoes are waterproof. Angie says, keep on going. Okay. Is this the salmon door? Right here? No? Okay. Look who has ladies and gentlemen. Stephen the Seagull heard about all this salmon. He's tired of the old, tired old locks from the bagels of random Brooklynites in New York City. He's decided to come over to the West Coast to find some good, fresh salmon. Fish Ladder Plaza, ooh. The Fish Ladder viewing room below offers a close up look at migrating salmon as they pass around the locks. You might see one or more four species of salmon. Seasoned sockeye, chinook, coho, steelhead. Those all sound like terrible derogatory terms. Um, juvenile salmon, oh. Some salmon just has to be a little bit more mature. Juvenile salmon leave the Lake Washington watershed for the Pacific Ocean each spring. Mature salmon returning through the fish ladder or returning to the river, steam, stream, or hatchery where their journey began three to five years ago. Oh, wow. Check this out.
All right, let's see if I. Sometimes has a wonderful memory. Really remember in the in the beginning of the movie, the kid and he sees the whale. Oh, this is kind of free willy. Imagine just as we're peeking in, a hand just comes out to the window. Oh, that'll be great. That'll be great. I mean, that would be very scary, and that should not happen. 